Hello and welcome to another edition of the Kingdom War Room. Uh, and today's discussion is going to be myself and my cohort in Kingdom Endeavors, Dr. Mike Spaulding. And we're going to be talking about a topic that goes beyond just who Jesus is. Jesus, remember, warned us, do not be deceived. Many will come in my name saying I am the Christ and will deceive many. But the world runs on deception and the kingdom runs on deception. And so today the topic is do not be deceived. And Mike, I don't know, you, you look at what's going on with the sexual agenda, with sexualizing our kids as young as kindergarten. You see the mess in Washington. You watch the evening news. Um, I think of the quote that our, our good brother Mark Sutherland out of the UK, uh, one of the quotes that really jumped out to me that he did is that king that truth is treason in a kingdom of lies. Amen. That is so true, Mike. And uh, what a lead in. I, I was just reading this morning um, an article that uh, John uh, Rappaport wrote, and <laughs> it's no coincidence that because we decided this topic a long time ago, and and today just happens to be the day that that, that we're discussing this deception. But a rapport to put an article out about the transgender uh, agenda and how it's being leveraged by by government and and not just the United States government. This is this it's everywhere. It's 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 global. But it's the a, thing that it's was interesting. That's the elitist thing, isn't it? Yeah. It, it is, and it, and, it, and it shows us, but this should outrage people, Mike. Um, Rappaport in, included a quote, and, and this was an article. I'm just going to read this and, and, and let those who have joined us today um, stew on it for a moment, and then maybe that'll, you know, especially those of you who have joined us today and, uh, and you live in New Jersey, listen up. Here, here's a quote. First graders in New Jersey will be learning about gender identity with new sex education curriculum, which includes a lesson that teaches children they can have boy parts but feel like a girl. The new lessons, which are part of a broader K-12 health and sex education curriculum adopted by the New Jersey Board of Education, are alarming some parents. You think? So Asbury Park Press first reported this, one of the 30 minute lesson plans called Pink, Blue and Purple teaches the students to define gender, gender identity and gender role stereotypes. Another lesson plan, this one for second graders called Understanding Our Bodies, tells teachers to instruct students that being a boy or a girl doesn't have to mean you have those parts. There are some body parts that mostly just girls have and some parts that mostly just boys have. Mike, that kind of stuff right there. And it's being taught right out in the open, brother. It is, and the, the truth is, I, I think that even part of the LGBTQ uh, people don't know the real hidden agenda. Remember, there's, there is lie upon lie, layer upon layer, uh, scheme upon scheme, and the ultimate scheme is to sexualize children to make pedophilia normalized where it's legal around the world. That's exactly what they're doing, and and the reason I think one of the reasons, Mike, that we're seeing this 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 very aggressive push is because time is winding down. I I, I think they've got an event that they're looking for to be really the the ultimate game changing game over event. I, th I think that's what they're pushing towards. That's why they're aggressive uh, in this, but also they're working against Yahweh. They're, they're, they're yeah. working against our God and they don't understand you're going to lose this friend. You're going to lose this. They, 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 they don't get it. And, and, and how I know they're going to lose this is that God's been revealing, you know, in the last three, four, five years, but especially in the last couple of years, Mike, he has been revealing like never before the level of child sex trap, the level of yeah. child kidnapping through our own. When I say our own, I'm talking about the organizations that some people think are related to the government, Child Protective Services. 
They're not related to the government. They're a nonprofit uh, incorporated organization, and they are hired as contractors to the government. They are the biggest purveyors of child sex trafficking in the world. So I think all of this is coming to a head right now, Mike. Well, one of the things I just recently ran across is that in New York, uh, Family Court is a privately owned corporation owned by one of the largest pedophiles in America. Yes. And all this yes. stuff yes. is going out. I've also heard rumors, then some of this goes back to the Trump era, where they commissioned certain people to take down. There's been like over 3,000 judges that have been basically relieved of their judgeship because of their involvement. And they've, they've, I think what they've done is probably forced them to retire you know, either retire or we'll make a real big uh, splash about it, and then your career's over anyway. Yep. Uh, but I mean, there's there's things being done, and and this is just one small piece. You know what what we're talking yes, yes. about here is just one small piece of the deception uh, yes. that's going on around the world. And uh, you know, one of the things I touched on in uh, in uh, the shine our directive it took me a minute to remember the name of my own book <laughs> <laughs> That's I get it. getting old uh, <laughs> is that there's only two types of history conspiratorial history and accidental history and accidental history is i don't know why it happened it just there it was and yeah. it actually takes more faith to believe in accidental history than conspiratorial and we see conspiracy in the very first book of the Bible. We see it in the very yeah. first real story of the Bible, the uh, this the uh, the serpent in the garden, the nechesh in the garden, that in that you had both a conspiracy and you had deception, which shows us the modus operandi of the enemy that he will continually use deception and conspiracy behind the scenes to get his agenda done. Yep, that's exactly right. I was looking for a, a book. I found a couple, but I, I just want to point people to to a couple of resources. Here's a good one, Trilaterals Over over Washington. So this is Anthony Sutton, uh, Patrick Wood. Anthony, uh, unfortunately, has gone on into eternity. Um, it, it's really a wonder that uh, the globalists didn't take him out um, because he really exposed a lot of their nefarious ways. He's written on uh, the Council on Foreign Relations, um, the connection between Wall Street and the Bolsheviks during the Russian Revolution and FDR and you name it. But this one right here um, is an excellent book and it gives you the history, friends, psychological warfare and the new world order. Um, I, I would encourage you to get the book, Secret War Against the American People, because that's exactly what we see happening today, Mike, and the deception. We still have a lot of people, Mike. I know people personally, they're believers, that they think the American government, the United States Incorporated, is actually looking out for our best interests. They actually think that, Mike. They don't understand. They hate us. <laughs> And I got beachfront property here in Missouri that I can sell them as well. <laughs> That's uh, right. I mean, when you really find out the, what they did and they, they created a pseudo America to lay over the top of the other. And, you know, I've been, and this is kind of off the subject, but Mary and I have been talking about spot judgment for well over a decade. God can judge the veneer while setting free the real. Amen. Amen. That's my prayer, brother. That is my prayer. God raised up America for a special assignment, and uh, and for for a while we fulfilled that assignment, and He continued to bless as we fulfilled that assignment. But there was a time in our history where we got off the rails, and it was through deception. Yes. Through deception. This is this is didn't come in when Obama came in. Didn't come in when Clinton came, didn't come in when Bush got didn't come. No, listen, this has been going on for 150, 75 years or more in this That's nation right and absolutely. other places, centuries. Right, Mike? Well, the, the truth is, and, and this is one of the things that we need to wake up and smell the coffee, is that after we fought a war uh, to free the slaves, they made us all slaves. Mm hmm. 
That is Whether a good way to put it. Whether we realize it or not, they made us all slaves. In yes. fact, it was said, and and my, one of my good friends, Randy, has the quote that was done on on the floor of the Senate that said, "If we pass this, we will make all American slaves." Correct. Correct. Well, it's a it's a it's a long long quote, and maybe I'll send it to you, uh, Mike. But uh, uh, Edwin Mandel, who was an advisor to Woodrow Wilson, he came out with a with a statement. I'll send it to you. Maybe you can pop it in the show notes or something um, for for people to find it. I'll, I'll find a link. But he came out and and made this statement, and this this had connections back to um to the Bilderberg group and, and the beginning of the Federal Reserve and and I would encourage people in fact to get um this book if you haven't read this book by G Edward Griffin I you, you got to this should be in your library friends because uh there there this, is a banking cartel that has nothing to do with America that we call the Federal Reserve here in America that's, that's exactly right. And they were the instrument to make us all chattel, serve slaves, basically. So so what, what you're talking about, Mike, is, is, is spot on. We are all slaves to the corporation. And uh, the faster yeah. that people understand that. And listen, when I say a corporation, I'm talking about Babylon. Yeah. Babylon. Is a corporation. Is a corporation. <laughs> And I think That's, what they did here in America has been repeated in every nation of the world. It has been. That's correct. This is this is global. This isn't just about America. This is the kind of dissent. But listen, friends, you know this already. Think this through. This is what is required for the man of lawlessness to enter onto the world stage. There has to be a global deception, and it's in place right now, Mike. And there, there's so many layers of it. Uh, we have so much of the church being deceived. Who's the real Jesus? Mm-hmm. You know, and this, this is kind of one of my soapboxes. But we have the New Age Jesus. We have the Malibu Barbie Jesus. We have the uh, we have the prosperity Jesus. We now have the social justice Jesus. None of them match up with the Jesus of the Bible. That's right. Yep. Amen. And, and uh, guys, we need to wake up that if if the Jesus that we serve doesn't match up with the whole of the Word of God. And the, and, the, and the Jesus that we find there, then we're serving an idol. We're yes. not serving the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. A Amen. And Mike, don't you think that's a, that's really a literal interpretation, um, application of uh, Jesus' statement in uh, Matthew and Mark that uh, in the times before my return to be a lot of people claiming to be Jesus, don't believe him. I, I, I see that as an application. So many presentations of who Jesus really is. Well, that's a false Christ. That's what you're talking about. That's an idol. It's a false Christ. Yeah. That is not Christ. The Christ is being presented. That's not. Mike, does it boil down to the fact that Christians don't have, and this is general broad brushstroke. Christians don't have any experience. They they don't know the voice of God. No. They've never heard the voice of God. They've never been led by the Holy Spirit. They have no experience with the Holy Spirit. Um, therefore, they're in the wilderness of their own making. Well, they, they part of it. They don't have this ongoing personal relationship with Jesus. You know, I, Mike, I've known you for years. In fact, first time we met, we were we were like brothers that had never met before. Okay, right. <laughs> because the kingdom is there. Yeah. Now, if I had somebody else come and say, "I'm Dr. Mike Spalding," after I have developed a relationship with you, I know you, I know your personality, I know your voice. Okay, mm -hmm. they can try it on the phone, not going to work. They can try <laughs> it in person, not going to work. They could even try it in a letter. But here's the deal. I know your character. <laughs> and if yes. that letter would not match up with your character, I would immediately reject it because I know you. Yes. Man. That's, that's 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 the problem. We have a lot of people that have a relationship with a the church. They have a relationship with the mm -hmm. denomination. Our relationship needs to be with Jesus and yes. with the word of God. Amen. I the word. 
And because I know the word and I know Jesus, even a lot of things today that are being given as prophetic utterances. Oh, man, I just pull my hair out. OK, yeah, <laughs> it, it doesn't line up with the character of God. It does that. That is not God any more than the man on the moon. Yes, and we, we have all these so-called prophets running around and they have worldwide ministries. But man, I, I ran across one the other day that when uh, here's one for you, I want, I want to see your reaction. When God uh, spoke authority over Adam and Eve, OK. This person is teaching that God knelt before Adam in submission to that authority. What? Oh, my goodness. No, I, well, a sovereign comes to mind, but I'm not going to say it. A sovereign never bows, even before a lesser king. Amen. Ever. That's one of the reasons why, when when Obama was over in um, Saudi Arabia and he was bowing to the king of Saudi Arabia and stuff, that was disrespecting the United States. That's right. Exactly right. Yep. That is so true. And 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 listen, don't don't take this anywhere else, friends, than the intended purpose to make an illustration or a point. We saw the exact opposite in DJT. The yeah. Exact opposite in DJT. He's walking and the Queen of England is following him. Yes. He's going to places over in the Middle East. And they are shaking his hand and, and acting very grateful to him because he's there, not the other way around. That's how it's supposed to be. <laughs> yeah. Well, even if, of course, you know, you, you dig deep enough in this stuff, there's a place in, in London called the city, mm -hmm. which is basically owned by the Rothschilds. It's the financial district. It yep. has its own army. Yep. And the Queen of England has got to ask permission to go. And she has to walk so many paces behind the mayor, Lord Mayor of the city, because it's connected to the Rothschilds. That is correct. And that answers the question, Mike. How in the world in, in London, England, could a, a uh, Muslim ever be elected as the mayor? Well, he was chosen, not elected. And it was really a finger in the eye to that nation and really kind of payback for their behavior, shall we call it, in the Middle East. Yeah. If we want, if we want to understand, like what we're supposed to be doing, we're talking about uh, the real Jesus being like Jesus. Our, our ministry should reflect the things that Jesus's ministry reflected. I always go to Isaiah 61. Uh, Jesus quoted this in, in, in Luke chapter 4, and, and he talked about what his ministry, he says, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because he has anointed me to bring good news to the afflicted, not the conflicted, but the afflicted. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to captives and freedom to prisoners. That's what we should be doing. Yeah. We should be bringing the good news that breaks chains, that opens cell doors, that delivers from bondages and strongholds of every sort. Now, there's going to be other things that we're going to be involved in, certainly, but at the root and the core of it is going to be setting people free and then discipling them in the in the true scriptures. Because, Mike, you and I are on the same page with, with, with this topic. The vast majority of uh, American Christianity, they don't know what the scripture says. They're certainly not teaching it. And if they would hear just the, the straightforward, unadulterated, without all the cotton candy and the fluff, teaching of the word of God and the responsibility that it calls forth from us, they'd be angry with that, wouldn't they? They would. In fact, uh, one of the things I bring out, you know, my, my big, one of my favorite quotes is that in a time where, you, I mean, you literally can hold an iPhone, and have a library that Isaac Newton or many of them would have just loved to had. And yeah. look what they look at what they did uh, with what they had, and many of the reformers and, and the small libraries they had. But biblical illiteracy is out of control. And what's funny, and I, I had a uh, fellow author point this out in, in the uh, the Shereth Imperative, and we're going to blame it on autocorrect. But <laughs> uh, twice I, I I had put in there that biblical illiteracy is at an all-time high. 
Now, three editors missed this, including myself, Mary, and then several editors at Defender. Uh, Word didn't seem to like that, and so it put in literacy. So I'm talking about everything degrading, but literacy, uh -huh. biblical literacy is an all time. I, so it's, uh, it's one of those things you wish you could go back and edit the book, but that, that thing's written in stone because Defender never goes back and edits. They're, they're off to the next project, yeah, which they could because nice. there's so much more stuff being written right now. But yeah. guys, uh, I remember years ago, and as I'm, sometimes I'm showing how long in the tooth I've been in this stuff. There was a, there was a Bible teacher named Malcolm Smith, okay, that he would go, and one of the things he would do is he would teach how to interpret the Word of God. He would teach basic biblical interpretation. And he went to this church, and they were just begging him, please come teach this. And his, his, big, his basic salva was, if I do this, things will never be the same in this church again. Mm -hmm. If I do this, you're going to make it hell on every preacher that travels through that stops by and preaches here with a new revelation. Yeah. And it, it will forever change the dynamic of your position in the charismatic movement if I teach you how to interpret the word of God. And so then he stopped and said, let's have a church vote. <laughs> <laughs> you want me to rock your world? Okay, let's rock your world. And then he commenced for three or four days to teach the teaching them on proper biblical interpretation, which not only keeps the pastor on his toes, which is a good thing. Yep. But uh, also all the junk. I, I remember. Uh, in fact, one guy would come and in, in, at one church I went to, he'd, he'd take a um, duct tape and he would make an X on the floor in the front of the church and say, "This is the spot. You get here and God will heal you." Oh, really? You get here and God will. Mm. And I don't see anywhere in the, in the Bible where, you know, Jesus took <laughs> duct tape or anything else. Uh, guys, all, all the gimmicks that we fall for. Now, Christians historically, if it's presented as a supernatural, we are extremely gullible. Okay. That's why that's why New Agers can uh, New Age and the occult have inf infiltrated the charismatic movement. The Masons have infiltrated the Baptist movement. Communism has has in, has basically taken over all the old line churches. Yep. Yeah. They have left it. the word of God for social justice, which is uh, absolute opposite of what the word of God really has to, to do with it. When you look at the core of it. It is simply transfer of wealth to create a new dynasty that will be a communistic, paganistic dynasty. That's, That's right. What it's all about. That's right. And, and guys, deception is on every front. You watch the evening news. When and I outline this again in the Shiner Directive, there is there is simply a handful of corporations that own almost all the news agencies. In fact, J.P. Morgan, and this is right at the turn of the 20th century. I went to a think tank and say, how can I control the newspapers in America? How many of them do I have to buy? I mean, he was prepared to buy them all. And they said, good news. You just got to buy 25. Like the Associated Press and, and other ones. And then you bring on your editor, your chief editor. And basically, you're going to make big bucks if you tow the rope. If you don't, you're out and you'll never work in, you'll never work in news again. And so in the beginning of the 20th century, they took over what is known as the fifth estate in America. Or is it the fifth estate or fourth estate? Fourth estate, I think. Um, they took it over. And today, when you watch the news, it's the guy who can look the most convincing reading from a teleprompter that gets <laughs> millions of dollars a year to do it. You know, that's a soulless individual, Mike, because soulless in the sense that they are just lost, gone, no conscience. It's it's become seared, as as the scripture says. They're they're a they're a a journalistic whore. They they are just an actor doing their script because most of them know that they are speaking a bald faced lie. They how, are, they are how many times? Lies. How many times in let's say the last five years 
that major newspapers on our, on our media that have come out and said, this is not true, it is a lie. And six months later, I'll be darned, it was the truth. Film at 11. Well, case in point, brother. <laughs> case in point right now, of course, it isn't going to get any press, but they've admitted that uh, the, the whole Steele dossier against JDT uh, T was 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 part of a, a DNC plot. They, they admit it. It was it was completely fabricated. Wait a minute, they've wait even a minute. admitted that all these people that we said were responsible were actually responsible. They've admitted that Hillary Clinton. The DNC paid a foreign actor to produce a dossier that was fake against someone running for presidency. By the very definition, that's called a conspiracy. Yes. Yep. Now, they've admitted all that now. Three, four years after the fact, but didn't get any press, did it? So now they can say, oh, no, we 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 corrected ourselves. We We were wrong. Well, the damage is already done intentionally, by the way. So so. All of these quote unquote journalists, they're, they're, they're really just actors. They're on a set and they're reading a script. They're, they're, they're giving you information. And, and sadly, Mike, a large percentage of Americans, they swallow it hook, line and sinker every day. When you, when you look at it, one of the things I have caught them doing is nobody reads past the headline. Right. The headline will say, the sky is purple. And then you read on down and it says, uh, you know, the scientists today know that the sky is blue. So the article contradicts the headline. Yep. And then they will also continue quoting information from past articles that have already been proven false and have been retracted by those newspapers. They never, ever refer back to the retraction. They refer back to the original article that was an error. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. Um, so there should be no question, and I don't think there is. The people that join us for the Kingdom War Room, Mike, they're, they're pretty smart folk. So they understand what's going on, and they're, they're shaking their heads with us. Yeah, we know. We know just how bad it is. So, so talking about deception, Mike, I, and I've deliberately been, been very, very quiet on this subject, um, and that is what's going on in, in the Ukraine. Oh, yeah. Um, I'm I've, not I've, silent. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it creates a situation. So, so very early when this first started, I reached out. There are um, ten Calvary Chapel churches in the Ukraine. So I reached out to those uh, ten churches. I heard back from eight, and of the eight, we heard back from three that had. Uh, uh, accounts set up so that we could help them. And um, so so we've done that as a fellowship. We've 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 helped them. And so I get information in in you know real information from folks with eyes on the ground, not your press, not not I get real information and it's a little bit different than what the, the press is is saying. Now I'm not suggesting that that Putin's an angel. I, I simply am not. He is he is what he is. However, truth of the fact is that he was more than just prodded. I think he was invited to do what he's doing right now. And part of that um, motivation for inviting him to do this was to cover up the tracks of our current crime family that's in control of the corporation. But it's still coming out. The truth is going to find a way to come out, Mike, and it is right now. So what are your thoughts on that whole thing? I, I don't want to really go into any more detail on that, but... I, I'm hearing from some ears and eyes on the ground. Uh, one is that uh, the U.S. and the Mossad had chemical weapons labs, bioweapons mm -hmm. labs there, uh, which supposedly, from what I understand, Putin has destroyed with incendiary weapons that melted everything down, destroyed it all. Uh, in fact, uh, in fact, when I was at here, the Watchman, one of the presentations. Uh, what's Dave's last name? Oh, I just had a. I'm starting to show my age. 
Hodges. Yeah, Hodges, thank you. Uh, quoted a man who did research that they believe that COVID-19 originated in the Ukraine then was transferred to Wuhan. Mm. And so you have that. Uh, I don't think that he was really ready to go over because there have been reports of Russian troops having no food, of starving, of being lost. And, and you know, I'm ex-military, okay? When you go over, and his, historically, he would give all this bluster over on his side of the border. I'm coming to get you. I'm coming to get you. And the world would back down. He even went as far as they erected uh, what looked like nuclear missiles and everything. I guess this was in the last 10 years. They were blow up. Yeah. Okay. Just to present before the world that. And I'm wondering either he was invited or something happened that maybe he felt like he had no choice. Maybe. I don't know. You can't get into the mind of of an ex-KGB right. agent, okay, and, right. and the dynamics. But the, although there's decimation going on, one of the things that we need to realize is both sides have the same weapons. And what I mean by that, all both sides have Russian-made weapons. So that if we say that a missile hits someplace and there's a big hunk of a missile left, well, first of all, when missiles explode, there's no big hunk of a missile left. There's maybe That's a right. thing, okay? But it's Russian. Both sides had 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 have Russian weapons. They both fly MiGs. They both, and so you know when you're looking at an F-15 compared to a MiG, it's easy. You're looking at a U.S. missile to a Soviet missile, easy breezy. But when they both have the same weapons, as well as their entire administration, to include the president, used to be actors before they were put into office. So there's, I mean, sure. there's, just, there's just a lot of questions that we can't trust the news that already uh, our current president is saying that this is opening up the door to a new world order. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there's, yeah. there's already an agenda there in place. And I don't know if we'll ever know what's really going on. I know that there are people suffering yes. in the midst of all this. And our response is to reach out and, and to help them and to pray for them. That's real. War in any, even pretend war, and I don't think it's necessarily all pretend. I think there's a lot of stuff staged. Remember when uh, Russia was going into Syria and they, they had this where these kids were supposed to have been hit by a nerve agent or something like that. And so there's guys in shorts hosing them down with, with water and we're being told that they that they have been some kind of a bio or chemical mm -hmm. agent. Anybody in the military that had any training at all was laughing in that scenario. Yeah. Because I'm thinking from a chlorine agent all the way to a nerve agent, you're all dead. That's right. Yep. Water doesn't yep. do anything. Yep. And you're not washing that stuff off. And and even if you did, you'd be in bio suits and all that other because that stuff be splashing all over the place. And it's like, are you serious? You're going to offer that? as proof <laughs> we even had one that trump called abc on where they they took night fire from one of the proving grounds here in america and showed it as if it was a film from what was going on in syria yeah and yeah. and and they were called on it so the the staging is there are the infamous on cnn when the reporter is supposed to be on location and he turns and the green screen behind him his nose and his ears disappear <laughs> <laughs> yeah maybe yeah, you need exactly to have a little right. bit better green screen technology if you're going to say you're on location yes amen uh, amen well, one of the things we'll, go ahead mike well i was wanting your your thoughts on this because one of the things that i find very telling right now is supposedly a u.s army lieutenant general roger clothier uh has been captured uh, in the Ukraine, in fact, in the the uh, the actual location, the Avastol Industrial Complex, captured um, because he was allegedly supervising or directing NATO and a multi-nation contingency, uh, the strategic brain or headquarters of this this conflict. He. He was supposedly in charge of that, but he's been captured 
allegedly, but the Pentagon is completely silent. Nothing coming out of them, and you can understand why, acknowledging that that's the case would lead to questions. What was he doing there? And they don't want to, they don't want any part of this. So it's almost like the Mission Impossible movies. We will disavow any knowledge of your mission should you be captured. And you don't know if this is misinformation or they're covering their own blessed assurances because if NATO or the U.S. is in country guiding anything, yep. we immediately become combatants. That's correct. Yep, that is correct. So the deception runs deep. That's that's the point. And that's why to say everything that I believe is actually going on over there, I think detracts from those that are that are really being hurt, people that are being killed, lives and, and businesses, a, a nation is being destroyed. The right thing to do for me is to reach out and try to help those who are helping others and uh, only bring this kind of stuff up when I'm talking to people like you, Mike. Yeah. And the truth is, when you look at the mindset of the world leaders and the Luciferian elite and everything else, all of us are expendable. In yes. fact, they set forth in the Georgia Guidestones, they'd like to get rid of all of us, but 650 million so that we can build their cars and their cities and grow their crops and and to make sure that they're well taken care of and they never have to ever sweat or have to labor for anything that they would ever want. And so to do something, if they've got to kill a million people, that's nothing to these people. Uh, guys, right now they're they're set, and and all this was done on purpose uh, for for food shortages around the world. Uh, well, the gas prices, you know, when you have a president shut down so much stuff, we went from energy independence to begging dictators to give us more oil in less than a year. We went from export a net exporter. Let that sink in, friends. A net exporter of energy and oil to now we're begging mike they, they they signaled all this to us because you know that's how the occult operates they've got to let us know what the what's on their mind and what they're doing and and they certainly did that through all kinds of movies but the one that comes to mind immediately after hearing your comments is the hunger games yeah. <laughs> that's exactly what they told us they were going to do right exactly in fact i've got uh, in my archive a quote from the the uh, Secretary of Energy, okay, that said, of course we dialed down petroleum, and it's it's going to be rough, but it was done on purpose. We got to get winged off of oil so that we can go on to electric and other sources. But none of those technologies are ready, right. and what they what and and basically ion lithium is a disaster. It yes. is it is an ecological disaster where they mine it. It, it, you, it, it, let's say for, for a general car, and I, I'm not, I've had other experts give me this information. I've not been able to run the numbers myself. But when you look at from mining to manufacturing the batteries that go in a car that's an electric vehicle, you have already expended more energy than all the gas that car will burn if it was a, if it was a fuel car in its entire lifetime. Mm -hmm. I believe that, yes. Yep. And then and then they don't magically recharge themselves. There's coal plants and whatever else that also have to burn something to recharge the batteries. It's it's all a ruse. In the mind of the elites, they're, they're fine with that scenario because, listen, friends, they don't want us having automobiles anyway. They want <laughs> us using mass transit. They want us all herded into these these, you know, stackable cities so that they can control us, so that with the flip of a switch, all of us will be without power, all of us will be without water, all of us will be without means of transportation. That's what they really want. Mike, we got a fight on our hands, don't we? There's a cartoon presentation that, I, I can't remember if it was the World Economic Forum or the EU presented, and it's called Smart Cities of the Future. Yes. Uh, you wanna talk about making your blood boil. Yep. That, uh, you know, now you have to walk everywhere and you and if you're going to have to walk to work or to a meeting, you have to register those extra calories that day in the smart city uh, to be able to have more rations to eat that day. And only the rich 
have motor vehicles that they go from place to place and the rest of us have to walk and eat and they're presenting this all as a good thing and i'm thinking are you crazy yeah yeah i think i just read an article mike um maybe within the last week i forget the name of these apartments these complexes but the go ahead has been given i think portland oregon is going to to pilot this program and, and basically what they are is they are apartment complexes with very very small one room they're not even efficiency apartments i mean i'm talking when i say one room i'm talking your bed folds out of the wall right next to the toilet in the sink and you've got a stove over here or something to cook with it's a one it's listen they got more room in manhattan in those tiny apartments than they'll have in these things that's what that's the prototype that's what they want to do to hurt us all in for of course control and the whole day you'll sit there and play a video game so that uh, in your virtual world they can give you all kinds of free stuff that isn't real and you know what mike they know we'll do it because people how many hours do people play video games to go through uh there was there was a quote from an episode of big bang that I thought was hilarious when uh, one of the one of the characters gets his digital stuff stolen off of off one of the video games, and he says, "It's like I wasted three thousand hours. <laughs> <laughs> you, you spent three thousand hours to get the magical sword or whatever else that you did that was stolen, but people, there that digital life mm -hmm. is." more real than real life, which is another level of deception. Well, Carl uh, Tykrib talks about that. There, there are now several, but but there's um, there's a, there's an alternative reality game that you can enter into as as you know you have your own avatar. It looks like you you know you actually live and interact in these these alternative cyber worlds and I, I forget what Carl called that do, do you remember um, what he said those were but those are those are catching on and and I think that's going to be utilized Mike in the future uh, a little bit like the matrix just to keep people calmed down and content and distracted and that'll be their life it, it, this this is this is horrific the future that these people have planned for us but it's being rolled out right now it's a new version of gladiatorism. I mean, it's just just a different version. Uh, and you know, years ago, back when uh, we were having to mess with you know mind control and all this stuff, we actually saw mind control victims that they would promise them rewards and everything. You know, if you took down this church and you did this and you did that, well, it it, it was never part of reality because they always have this inner world going on with with a with a with a part of their mind. And so they can have jets, they can have, the, and you know what? It costs the elite nothing because it's none of it is real. Right. Yeah. And I, I think they've <laughs> taken that same scenario and they're trying to, to push it on the masses. Deception and uh, guys, a lot of our leaders are deceived. When you start messing with this level of evil, it's you have, there has to be a level of deception within yourself. Yes. Amen. Uh, amen, Mike. The, those that uh, those within the Illuminati that uh, they believe that they're no longer Homo sapiens, that they're Homo superior, on their way to Homo Deus, mm -hmm. that their wealth and affluence has caused them to uh, to and believe it or not, Mike, they don't believe in evolution. Evolution is a lie that they feed uh, to the rest of us. Uh, they believe in reincarnation. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that was something Doc Marquis and I sat down and he was just adamant about it. He said, listen, he says that the lie is evolution. He said the way that they evolve, if you will, if they die for the cause in this life, they get a better position in the next. Yeah, there you have it. That's okay. that's it right there. Well, they don't yeah. have to have guilt that if you that if you kill somebody for the cause and uh, that person, OK, you murder them. But because they were murdered for the cause, they come back in a better position. So you decept them once on the chessboard. You yeah, know? that's that's it right there. Yeah, yeah. I've been hearing a lot of chatter, Mike, um, about a false flag event, potential for one coming up here very, very soon. Um, no, 
no details. I'm not, I'm not prognosticating. Uh, that's not what I'm saying. I, I just, I'm, I'm seeing different people starting to talk about uh, a false flag event and a major false flag event. And, and it's going to be somehow tied uh, into the Biden administration because listen, folks, behind false flag events is the United States Incorporated organization. Mm -hmm. So if this, I'm not suggesting what it will be, I'm just suggesting it will be used as a platform to move this nation into something that we otherwise wouldn't do. So just yeah. keep your eyes open, friends. That's it is also known as the Hegelian dialectic. Okay. Yes. <laughs> you create a problem and the solution they present a solution that takes people to a place they would have never have gone. Right. If you had not caused the problem. And you have to and you have to control both sides of the equation. That's why we have Democrat and Republican, yes. capitalist and communist. And it's the really all, it's all the same thing. And the really evil thing, Mike, is they make you believe it was your choice to get there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like the Patriot Act, you know. When you look at some of the things that were in the Patriot Act, there were no longer there were no more Patriot than the man on the moon. That's right. Yep. Yep. And I I always uh, remark to people on that subject, Mike. I say, how in the world do you think that uh, within days after 9/11 that that Congress had a bill that was, you know, <laughs> two two thousand pages already ready to go and vote on. It's like, well, that puppy was sitting on a shelf someplace, just ra waiting for the proper opportunity. And here you go. Knock the dust off that bad boy. We're going to give it a fancy name, and here we go. <laughs> here we go. Our dreams are about to come true. And the reality That's is, most. Senator, I don't think most senators and congressmen actually write anything at all. They have teams yeah. to do it. And I think those guys are working more for the deep state than anybody else. And yeah. they'll give it a Republican flavor or a Democratic flavor, but it still takes us to the same place. That's that's exactly right. Yeah. Uh, politicians don't write those things. It's it's uh, lobby groups. It's it's um, PACs, political action committees for a particular industry or interest. Um, these days, geopolitical, mostly geopolitical globalists, they introduce a lot of this stuff and it just gets the rubber stamp. And the reason for that, friends, listen, th and this isn't cynicism at all. It's a reality. The reason that this happens in America is because, uh, well, it's been many decades ago now. People that hate us, people that hate human beings, they finally figured out, hey, if we write a check big enough, those people in Washington D.C. will accept anything. Yeah, and it's been proven. That, that's that's called being a political whore. That's right. Because they were supposed to represent us. I remember an old Missouri boy named Harry Truman. Although he was a Mason, okay, he did say something I thought was really correct. He said the only way to get rich to get rich in politics is to be a crook. <laughs> True story. Yep. True story. Harry got that one right. That's for sure. You say, and so, you know, how we do, we, you know, we have to vote our faith. We have to be involved at all levels, local, all the way up through. And I think we have to take it back. But guys, our salvation is not going to come through Washington, D.C. No. It's going to come in spite of it. That's right. It's going to come in spite of the Justice Department. It's going to come in spite of everything that up there represents. It's going to have to flow from the church. Yes, amen. That what we need is a revival with, with true signs and wonders. Yes. That God begins judging evil and deception in our land. And once he begins doing that, the fear of the Lord will not only return upon God's people, but it'll even cause the sinner to fear God and fear the church, which it used to do back when we were a republic. That's right. Amen. Amen, Mike. Yeah. The Ecclesia needs to get back to the place where where we expect God to break out in our midst when we gather together. Listen, if you're at a place, friends, if you're at a place where you gather week after week after week after week and you could just hit the rerun button because, yeah, we did this last week and yeah, yeah, and we're going to do it now. And, and 
where's God in all of that? Where is the manifestation of the spirit in all of that? Where is the power and the authority that we've been told we have and we do for setting people free? from breaking those bondages. Where are the people that are coming in looking for deliverance from those things? Yeah. Where are they? And if you That's go the ecclesia to, we should be. And if you go week to week hearing the truth and don't change, there's one of two things going on. Either that preacher's not preaching truth or you're not applying it. That's it right because there. You're going with the wrong mindset. That's right. Amen, Mike. Amen. We've got our marching order, friends. I, I think we understand what we need to be doing. I encourage you to get out there and do it. And if you can't find a fellowship where you're at, if there's no ecclesia that's a true ecclesia, start one on your own. The Lord will supply. Remember, it isn't up to us to build the ecclesia. Jesus said, I will build my church. Yeah. Trust him to do that. You don't know how many people I've heard from that, like with Biblical Life TV or uh, and other ones, what they'll do is they started watching it and they couldn't find a church and they start watching that. Then they would start taking it apart and they would look up all the Bible references. They'd break out their commentaries and stuff. And I've heard from some say, listen, we had to build onto the house because we had so many people crammed in there. <laughs> and Glory. Glory to God. What we do is we'll listen to your teaching and take vigorous notes and then we'll spend the next five hours fellowshipping and researching everything you said to make sure that it was right. And a, a, you know, amen, amen. Be Bereans. That's exactly yeah. right. And you know, Mike, the Lord's doing the same thing with Calvary. We've the our online congregation is 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 bigger than the people that actually show up in the flesh on any given Sunday or Wednesday. The online congregation is is growing for the very reason that you cited because people have looked around and. It's few and far between that a good ecclesia exists, so they're just joining us. Well, that that new center that uh, that we're doing right now is all because of our partners across America and, and around the world. And mm -hmm. I have been um, humbled and sometimes flabbergasted <laughs> by, yeah. by their generosity. Yeah. And, uh, it, it's in some ways it's it's getting close. We we're going to have this thing hopefully done everything. Uh, probably except for the PA system and the chairs and all that, we're going to have it done by fall. We're wow. hoping to have the first is... one done uh, next spring. And what's going to be the kicker is when we have the money to order the chairs, are we going to get them? Or are we going to be told they're eight months back ordered? You know, that's, that's, uh, I, I was told by the company that um, that's looking at giving us a bid for the PA system and the video system and all that. They said, literally, the equipment that's so hard to get that they, he said, now we, when we give you this price, it's only good for 30 days because the price of some things may have doubled uh, wow. after 30 days uh, because it's just simply so hard to get. Wow. Uh, but the, the hunger's there, Mike. The, the remnant around the world are hungry for the truth. And the truth is you're going to have to pray through some issues. You're going to have to pray and ask God to give you discernment. And you're going to have to know the word of God. And one of the reasons why they hate Christianity and they hate the word is that if we understand the word, if we understand the book of Daniel, the book of Revelation, we know their game plan. Yep, that's right. And the right. pickle they have is they can't implement it without Christians pointing back to the Bible and say, this was prophesied thousands of years ago, and this is proof that the Bible is true. They got to silence us before they can do that. Otherwise, people are starting to catch on. Yeah. Yeah. And Amen. One of the things that I, and this was encouraging to me, and this was during the height of the uh, pandemic, is that when uh, there are two things you couldn't find at Walmart when you went, you couldn't find toilet paper, but you couldn't find Bibles either because everybody bought every Bible that was on the shelf. Mm -hmm. That there was an awakening. Yeah. You know, this sounds like something grandma told us about, and so we better we better check it out. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. Yeah. God'll turn that that what they meant for evil into good. And and I'm sure there were many I know for a fact that churches that now broadcast online or through Zoom, whatever platform they use, has has exponentially increased. And so and, and and so that means they're reaching many more people. So God used that, turn that around on these wicked people 
and now now good churches are able to reach people they otherwise wouldn't. Oh, absolutely. And uh, you know, if there was in fact there was an article in uh, the Christian Post. People are leaving churches and masses never to return. I know why because they found something better that they could watch in their own home that was actually feeding them the word. Yeah. And uh, guys, yeah. if if there was ever <laughs> time to take the time to know the word. If there was ever a time to take the time, and and I remember when uh, when Mary was praying and she was trying to hear the voice of God. I mean, it, it wasn't just she prayed once; she prayed for months. And there were times I'd come home and her hair was just about because st sticking up because she was almost rolling in the floor, saying, "I'm a sheep and not a goat, and I'm a sheep and not a goat. I'm going to be able to hear His voice." And she, and, and she had to break through. And sometimes you've got to break through, but know that what you're hearing from God. Well, number one, we'll always line up with the word. And this is the neatest one, Mike, I found. God is always a whole lot smarter than you are. That when you start hearing from him, you're thinking, I couldn't have figured that out. If I'd have, if I'd have had 100 years, Lord, I could not have figured that out. Because he is so much smarter. Uh, and we don't have to fear his voice because he is gentle. Yes. Uh, I, I had a, a stepfather that was um, very abusive. And so I would find myself going to God kind of like this, unless I was going to get a sermon, you know. And uh, you know, God said, "Put your hands down," and you know, I'm not, I'm not going to whoop you. I'm not going to, I'm not going to. Uh, I, I want to correct you, but I know how to correct each one of my kids, and each one of my kids get corrected differently based upon who they yeah. are. Yeah. Because he knows the difference between his kids. Yes. Amen. So, so very, very true. He is, he is a loving, gentle merciful yeah. gracious forgiving father friends don't ever hold back don't ever think you cannot come to the father because you can for anything at any time he is there for you yeah the only time i've and here lately i've had him say something really stern mary and i were preparing a podcast and just thinking through the issues and i mean i was in my living room and the holy spirit just and i mean stern don't ever call salvation free I said, do you know how many times I've heard that at the altar salvation mm -hmm. is free? He says, depends on who you are. Yeah. Yeah. That uh, from God's perspective, it wasn't free. It was the most dramatic. And in fact, angels are still, I think, trying to fully grasp and comprehend what would move the creator to go and die in the place of the one that offended him yes. and broke his laws and broke his commandments. It's otherworldly. There's there's no explanation in in the realm of our understanding that is satisfactory. At least that's my experience, Mike. I I cannot fathom that. Even even you know I can think through all you know that process and and how it would apply in my own life with with one of my children. But I cannot fathom doing that, creating all of this, watching it fall and then redeeming it i i that's yeah. hard for me to grasp mike i'm the wounded party i gave you everything i gave you the very breath in your body i gave you paradise mm -hmm. and then you rebel against me yeah. and i'm the wounded party i told you to begin with if you did this the penalty would be death and yet the one who created ended up dying to redeem lost humanity Yep. See, salvation was not free. It took it, it. It was the most costly thing that heaven ever did. Yes, exactly, exactly. And, and the blood of Jesus is the most precious substance in the entire universe. Yes, yes, and and along with the most costly, the most amazing, surprising, and unexpected, and that's why <laughs> the enemy was not ready for that. That was the last thing. Yeah, and the most powerful. The most powerful it'll kill sin better than roundup will kill a weed man that's powerful that's powerful <laughs> stuff and roundup just keeps on going it kills anything it comes in contact with even if it's in the food but that's a whole nother story that's a whole we'll save that one for another show yeah <laughs> well praise god guys if 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 we've inspired you to do anything, we've in, uh, I hope we inspired you to take a look at the world around you and know that the very mechanism to have a dictator 
requires two things, deception and power. And when the deception is taken away, all he has left is power, which will eventually fade away. Yeah. That's right. And so break through the deception, the kingdom of God. And I want to close with this. This this is a little Hebrew lesson. In Genesis 1, 2, where the world was was became void, that's tohu. Well, if you look it up in a decent Hebrew lexicon, it not only means chaos and confusion, it means unreality. That there was a deception brought, okay? And so you're always going to find the counter to that in Jesus. Yes, he amen. Said, if, you, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall know the truth and the truth will set you free. Look up that word truth in the Greek. It not only means that which is truth or a fact, it means reality. Yes, that we have the access to reality, no matter how much unreality or deception that they try to put forth, a Christian that is prayed up and is read up in the word of God will be able to see through that deception and walk in the reality of the kingdom. Amen. And that's what God is calling all of us to do. And every single one of us, if you love Jesus, if you've made him the Lord and Savior of your life, you have access to that. Amen. It's just a matter of growing up into it is what we're trying to encourage you to do, to see the world around you the way that it is, and know that the kingdom of God is on the inside of you, waiting to get out, and it's going to, it's going to and when it does, it's going to be like turning on the light, and all the cockroaches are going to go running. Amen. But that way Amen. in your life, uh, in your communities, in your family, that when the light of the kingdom comes, it automatically shows the deception of the enemy, and he primarily works through deception in all that he does. Amen. Yeah, that's a good word to close us out, Mike. It's uh, we're living in that world of deception, but yes. the Lord Jesus Christ said that all of those who are in him, we've got eyes to see, we got ears to hear, we know what's going on. Those of us who understand what's going on, we need to share that with others, not, not to generate uh, fear, but to educate and inform and motivate, as you said, Mike, to take action. And that action has to do with advancing the name of Jesus. Yeah. The truth will empower us. Amen. Because Amen, there's more, you have more potential in the kingdom than you have ever been taught from the pulpit. And I believe, right. I believe it's this time in Christian and church history that we're going to discover what it means to move in kingdom power, kingdom authority, and we're going to have a people that the only need that they will ever bow is to the throne of Jesus. And they will not Amen. bow to a perdition. They'll not bow it to any other government. They'll not bow it to the lies of men, but they'll be able to have laser vision to see through the lies so that they can speak truth into Amen. a world in darkness. Amen. Friends, my prayer for you is that you'll have a breakthrough right into the reality we've been talking about today. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Yeah. Father, in Jesus name, let every person that listens to this have a supernatural breakthrough. Father God, we loose an anointing in the name of Jesus that yes. bores through the lies, that bores through the deception, that bores through the matrix of lies the enemy has woven, has woven around us. Yes. And we command those things to be tore down and yes. for the eyes to be open. Yes. Your truth and your kingdom and your ways. Yes. In Jesus' name. Yes. Amen. Amen. Amen, brother. Stay informed. Tune in to weekly podcasts by Dr. Michael and Mary Lou Lake to keep you informed, inspired, and empowered in the kingdom of God. Tune in to www.kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. That's kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. This video was made possible by our partners worldwide. Please prayerfully consider supporting the ministry that is preparing the remnant for the unfolding of the end times prophecy. Send your offerings to Biblical Life, P.O. Box 160, Seymour, Missouri. That's Biblical Life, P.O. Box 160, Seymour, Missouri, 65746-0160. You can also donate online at store.biblical-life.com. That's store.biblical-life.com.